Hey guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I thought I would do kind of an educational video. I feel like a lot of my Pearson related ones can be considered educational ones, but this one like really educational, like that's its purpose is to be informative. Oftentimes when I get a Pearson, I will sometimes change the jewelry out a little sooner than you probably should. And a lot of people call me on that. My video about my Rook Pearson, we'll put up here. I changed my jewelry out probably a little sooner than I should have, but I had a specific reason for doing so. And that is because the jewelry material, metal, however you want to refer to it, that I was initially pierced with is one that does not react well with my body. I have very sensitive skin. I wouldn't necessarily go as far as to say that I have a nickel allergy, but I do have sensitive skin and so it makes it so that my body can't heal at the rate it should. Make sense? So for today's video, I am going to be discussing the various types of body jewelry materials or metals, however you want to refer to it. I see both ways online. Now keep in mind, this is not an end all be all list. However, it is a pretty extensive one. Um, there is no particular order for how I have this laid out. It's just kind of how it came to me. It's also not a complete rundown of each type, but I am going to touch on common materials as well as like pros and cons and, and why they may or may not be good or, or good things about them, yada, yada, yada. So the first one I'm going to start with is stainless steel. It is the most basic jewelry material, most commonly found especially for initial piercings. It is oftentimes used in initial piercings and healing. This is a good material to use because it is on the cheaper end. It's still a good quality, but it is on the cheaper end. So if you're looking to save a few dollars when especially getting that first initial piercing, stainless steel is probably a good way to go. Next is implant grade steel. This is kind of a higher quality than stainless steel. It is also a really good option for those that do have allergies. This is basically like you've got stainless steel and then you've got the implant grade steel, which is like as, as good as you can get when it comes to steel. Like it is, it is right up there. Of course, it's going to cost more. That's just, how quality works. The higher the quality, the higher the cost. Next is titanium, which is my personal favorite. Oftentimes this is preferred over steel because there is no nickel in titanium. Whereas with stainless steel or implant grade steel, there is nickel in it, which can cause allergies. Titanium, like implant grade steel, is really good for those with sensitive skin or with allergies. Of course, like I said, the higher the quality, the higher the cost. So with titanium, it usually is a little bit more expensive. However, it can also come in a variety of colors, which is pretty fun. But with those colors can come faded. So you gotta weigh your pros and cons there. Next is acrylic. And acrylic is such a huge taboo, especially for those who are stretching their earlobes. People are like, oh, I swear by acrylic. And then some people are like, oh my God, acrylic's the worst thing ever. Is it the worst thing ever? No, there are far worse things out there. However, it is not the best. Acrylic should be used for healed piercings only. You should not be stretching with acrylic. Under no circumstances should you use acrylic for brand new or healing piercings. It's just not good. And one of those reasons is that it can't be sterilized or autoclaved, however you want to refer to it. However, one of the positives about acrylic is how lightweight it is. It is super lightweight, like you can almost hardly feel it, but it's also extremely fragile. So you kind of got to weigh your pros and cons. It's also cheaper. It is a cheap alternative. Probably can get away with using it in a new or healed Pearson. Personally, I wouldn't let it come near like 10 feet near any of my new or heal, healing piercings. I would only let it come near a healed piercing and not even for a long period of time. Next is Bioplast, which I have actually used before when I had my weight loss surgery and needed to put a whole bunch of retainers in for my surgery so I didn't get electrocuted and all that fun stuff. I use Bioplast retainers. Bioplast is pretty cool in the sense that it is extremely flexible and you can also like cut the length so that you can 
customize the length of the bar or, or whatever shape jewelry it's in. The cool thing about Bioplast is that it doesn't contribute to any allergic reactions. So if you do have sensitive skin or if you do have allergies, Bioplast is a pretty good material to choose. It has also been known to contribute to, you know, less swelling as well as less infections because it doesn't have those ingredients in it that cause allergies. The next four on my list are typically related to like plugs and tunnels, so, so keep that in mind. Though you can also find it in something jewelry. The first one is glass. I personally love glass. One of the best things about glass is that it doesn't cause allergic reactions because it's just that glass. It can be sterilized and it can be cleaned thoroughly, which is awesome. It's also incredibly strong, though probably not as strong as say titanium or like the, the implant grade steel. However, because it is glass, it can shatter. So if you drop it on the floor, there's a good possibility of it just going poof. Think Thanos in Avengers. The next one is bone. Personally, I don't think I could ever do bone. I don't know, the, for some reason the, the concept just kind of queezes me out, but a lot of people swear by it. However, something to keep in mind about bone is that it can't be sterilized and you really have to be careful about how you clean it. You should only use oils on it. Like you can't soak it in anything. Bone should only be used in healed piercings. Next is stone. I've seen so many different like stone tunnels and plugs before and they're gorgeous. So when I get to my goal size, I'm totally gonna stock up because they're gorgeous. However, stone again, like bone, should only be used in healed piercings. Unfortunately, it cannot be sterilized. However, stone does come in a variety of colors, shapes, and sizes, which gives you that variety. So if you're looking for a little bit more, stone is a pretty good option. And kind of like glass, it can shatter. So if you drop it, there's a good chance of it just going. And another one is wood. Wood is extremely lightweight, so I know a lot of people like it. However, again, should only be used in healed piercings. Like bone, it should not get wet, ever. There's also the possibility that it would need to get sanded down, which just seems like way too much of a hassle for me. The next two materials are often used at places like Claire's because you hear people talk all the time about these two materials being the best and they really aren't. So the first one is sterling silver. Everyone knows sterling silver, right? Actually not that good for you. Sterling silver should only be used in healed piercings and not even for long periods of time. It should never be used in a new or healing piercing. Looking at you, Claire's, sterling silver is an extremely soft material so it should not be used every single day, every single hour. Sterling silver, if you've ever had like a sterling silver ring or something, you'll notice that it can tarnish. It can also tarnish in other types of jewelry. And just think about that, that tarnish, that gross looking color, like can slough off and get in your piercing, especially if it's healing, which is why you should not use it in a healing piercing. Sterling silver can also react with those who have that nickel allergy. So that's why I'm like a big proponent of titanium because no reaction to that. But like with steel, sterling silver also kind of can give people that, that allergic reaction if they have a nickel allergy. The other one is gold. Now gold isn't the worst. However, you need to know what kind of level you need to use for body jewelry. So it's suggested that if you're gonna have gold jewelry, you need to only do 14K or 18K. Don't do anything else. Anything below 14K can like almost promote develop an allergic reaction, if that makes any kind of sense. And then 24K, which is, you know, high quality, is good, is pretty expensive, is too soft. For both of these, you should not use alcohol to clean, which is what Claire's tells you to do. Just saying. And the final material that I'm gonna discuss, I personally haven't seen this too often, but in my research, I found that apparently it's out there. And that's silicone. So what I found about silicone, since I, like everything else on this list I've heard of, I've had an experience with. Silicone's the only one that I'm going in like, I have no idea. But it apparently it's really good for those with allergies, which makes sense. And it can also be sterilized, which to me is like a huge factor in deciding what material I'm gonna pick. However, one thing that I did see highlighted is that silicone is not good for stretching your earlobes because there is a higher risk of your lobes tearing, which is not good. 
we don't want that. So that's all I was able to find on silicone. And I thought I'd just go ahead and throw that at the end of the list, just in case anyone was looking at jewelry that was made of silicone. Like I said, this is not an end all be all list. This is also not an extensive list based on information regarding each type of jewelry. But a lot of people ask me, oh my God, why do you change it so soon? And I, I started thinking about, you know, how stainless steel, I don't necessarily think I have an allergy to it. I just know that with my sensitive skin, I have to be careful with what touches it. And if it's angry, and you know, with whatever material is in there and it's trying to heal, it's gonna take a whole lot longer or not heal at all. So that's why I always change it out to titanium. However, I've also gotten smarter and when I go for a piercing, I automatically say, hey, can you pierce me with titanium? They're always like, oh yeah, it's more expensive. And I'm like, I don't care. Just, it'll save me a whole lot of hassle. Let me know in the comments below what material is your favorite. I know I said that some of these are not good with new or healing piercings. Let me know if you've got an experience with any of them in new or healing piercings. A lot of people get really lucky. Like, you know, sterling silver. A lot of people get lucky and don't develop any kind of allergic reaction or any kind of issues. I personally have. The majority of the internet does. So if you haven't, please don't get all bent out of shape by me saying it's not good for a new or healing piercing. You just got really lucky. Like, I'm jealous. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button wherever it may be, because I don't know. Even though I do, this is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you wanna know when I upload, and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys.